Hey guys, thanks for coming by. I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds. I know I've been streaming a lot of Final Fantasy X lately. You can come check that out. I'm on OF. I'm on everything. The socials are down below. But uh, yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe. This isn't even really a theory. It's more just my personal opinion. And I don't really have any anything to back this up, so this will probably be a short video. But Maester Aemon, <laughs> I love Maester Aemon. I think he's my favorite Targaryen besides Visenya and Bloodraven. I'm pretty sure that if he wouldn't have passed up the crown, the Targaryens would still be in power. Now, I know you came here for more than that, so this time I have a notebook with things wrote down in it. Okay, there was the Great Council of 233 AC. That's where Maester Aemon said, I don't want it. Give it to my younger brother. Now, uh, they kind of shit-talked his younger brother because, like I've been saying, now, I mean, look at all these dynamics that have been working. The Mandalorian, uh, Obi-Wan and Leia running around. Uh, we really like the idea of, and if, <laughs> if I still have the footage, I'll cut back to it. We like the idea of the special little sidekick or the royal little sidekick running around with the badass. You know what I mean? That's Duncan Egg. The egg in Duncan Egg is Aegon V. That's Maester Aemon's little brother. That's the one who got the throne over him because he said, no, he can have it. They tried to give it to Aemon, but he was like, no. So eight, oh my god, my cat's here. She's here. But I don't know where. Anyway. You guys hear her? Fuck. Snarf? Please stop being scary. Anyway, Aegon's dad was Makar. His mother was a Dane. And, so, so that should tell you something right there, they didn't have super incest going on. Okay, so the Great Council happens because, Snarf, please stop tearing things apart. The Great Council happens because the older brothers died. I don't know what she's eating. The older brothers died. The, only, the heir had left behind a daughter, which everybody claimed had issues or was weak, but it, like, but she was also a kid. But like the way that George R. R. Martin writes this world, like we've been talking about, it's wrote from hearsay. So we don't really know if that's true or not. Plus they kind of just had a problem with ladies ruling and the other one was an infant. So they were like, no, fuck that. So then the rulers were like, okay, the lords were like, okay, well, let's have a big meeting and pick who runs shit. Then they were like, well, let's give it to Aemon. Now Aemon turned it down. The reason I say that Aemon would be the best king, because what does Ragnar Lothbrok say in Vikings? He says the best, and Dumbledore says something very similar. Those best suited to power are the ones, I, I think I'm mixing both the quotes together, but uh, Ragnar says, the, the ones who are best for power are the ones willing to bend down to pick it up and kneel to pick it up. And Dumbledore says something, those, those best suited towards power are those that it's thrust upon, not those who choose it. That's kind of, that's kind of Maester aemon -y. And he's like, no, and that's what makes him different. And he says, give it to my younger brother. Now, Aegon V was a, was a great guy. He was called, um, I had it wrote down, like I said, I don't want to have anybody yelling at me. Oh, half a peasant. Now I've been talking about how much we like Aegon V over here. We love Egg Because Egg was running around with Sir Duncan the Tall and got to know the small folk, and got to know how the regular person lives. So he was like the, the one king that was closest with like, I know how you actually, that regular folk live. You know what I mean? And that's kind of important when you're a ruler. But I think Mr. Ingham would have been smarter. I'm not here to talk about theories with Egg dying or Sir Duncan the Tall dying. I'm not here to talk about none of that. I'm here to just say, in my opinion, th theoretically, in a multiverse situation, I think the Targaryens would have stayed in power. I think that Maester Aemon, in my last video, like I talked about, that scene in the show specifically, and in the book it's great too, of course. I love the books. But I think people think I don't like the books because I, I, I give George R. R. Martin a hard time jokingly over here. But because of that Targaryen flip and that Targaryen temper he has, but he's able to rein it in, and that scene when he's talking to Jon Snow in the show, and Peter Vaughn is so good in it, when, he, when Jon's debating on riding south to meet up with Rob, he's like, you don't understand, my brother's at war. And he's like, my father was Magar. And then he's like, hold up, wait. And then he's like, my brother was Egg, and he's like, who are you? And he's like, my name was Aemon Targaryen, motherfucker. Like, when they, when I heard what they did to the children, like, I, like, you see how angry he gets as an old blind man. So imagine that as a young man in power, but he's able to rein it in and check himself. Like I said, he gives it up. He's offered the crown. They're like, here you go, go ahead, you can rule. And he's like, no, it's not for me, give it to my younger brother. And that takes a special kind of person to pass up power like that, like a Dumbledore. So I'm just saying, I really truly believe that, and I've always felt that way, where I'm like, maybe if Maester Aemon, but who knows, maybe he would have got, gotten corrupt. Like Dumbledore, that's why he never took power. He always said power is my weakness. But I've always had this thought, and I never really talked about it, but yeah, I, I, I strongly believe that. Three favorite Targaryens, Maester Aemon, Visenya Targaryen, and Bloodraven. Those are my favorites. And I stand by what I said in my last video about Roose Bolton. He, I, I love him. I don't care what anybody has to say. I'm not talking about Ramsay. I'm talking about Roose. Our blades are sharp, okay? But anyway, 
I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. I just had this thought and I was like, I, I just automatically always thought. It's one of those things that I have in my head that I assume we all agree on, but then I realize I've never said this out loud and I don't think I've ever heard anybody else say it out loud. If Maester Eamon, the guy at the wall, the blind man at the wall, if he would have said yes and he would have became king, we might be in a totally different situation. Like, I think that Eamon is very smart. He's very, he's very intelligent. And like I said, from that scene in the books and the show, we see that Targaryen like... No, I can get pissed. I can get pissed and I can show you pissed. I can show you anger. I can show you that. And it's like, we just see an old man who's blind at the wall. So we know, like, maybe you're not a threat. But still, even in that performance in the show, you're like, whoa, buddy. I realize, I'm always listening to Game of Thrones. And I realize, like, he didn't, he didn't, ch he chose. That's another thing. He chose to go to the wall. I, I kind of thought they were like, oh, we need a new maester. And they were like, stick Aemon up there. But I don't think he did that. I think... I think he chose, but tell me down in the comments if I'm wrong. Did he choose to go to the wall? Because I'm pretty sure he chose to go to the wall. Like, comment, subscribe. Come check out my Final Fantasy X stream. I'm sorry that I'm churning that out so much. It's just, uh, life right now is, it's really hard. I've never had anybody do anything this kind for me in my life. But if you would like a Motor City Nerds Movie Lovers Unite t-shirt, the link is down below. All the proceeds go to helping us out right now because we had a major death in our family that came out of nowhere. And I'm trying not to cry. But I don't think I've ever had anybody do something that's nice for me. And uh, John over at Movie Lovers Unite, if you're not subscribed to him, go check him out. Like, I've never had anybody do something that's nice for me. He was like, hey, I had these made. And all the proceeds are going to go to helping you guys out right now. And I was just like, man, you don't have to do that shit. Like, people don't have to do that. And then it's like, that's, that's like what restores my faith in people. And it's like, I'm already going through like a really hard time. <laughs> So it's just nice being reminded that there's like decent people out there. But yeah, um, they're really cool. They're really awesome. They're really cool t-shirts. But yeah, check them out down below. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. But yeah, it's just been, shit's just been hard. And then I'm like, why are we talking about Maester Eamon more? <laughs> but yeah, suck it up, Bab. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, life's hard sometimes. You just never get used to losing people, I realized. You know what I mean? But that's like, seriously, that's one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for me. When he was like, no, I did this and this. I'm like... Man, my tardy, can't get out of bed, can't stick to a schedule, collab with anybody ass because I'm oversleeping or at work or depressed or some shit and you're looking out for me, like I really, it means a lot, it just means a lot to me. So yeah, stay safe out there and just, just appreciate each other more.